Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, give God a hand and clap of praise. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. It's good to see your smiling faces this morning. Amen. God has been good to us. He's allowed us another opportunity that we can come to the house of worship and to glorify and to praise his holy name. Amen. We're going to ask this morning if you will stand with us as we go before the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we come this morning into thy presence with thanksgiving in our hearts and with praises upon our lips. We are so grateful this morning, Lord God, that you allowed us to lay our tired and weary bodies down last night and we were able to rest our bodies while we slumber and slept. We thank you, Lord God, that while we slept last night, you kept uh, all hurt, harm, and danger from us. You didn't allow death to enter into our rooms, and then we found that early this morning, you touched our eyes with the finger of love and allowed us to awaken to see the dawning of a new day. Father, when we woke up this morning, we realized that we still had a roof over our heads and walls that surrounded us, that set on, that set on a foundation. We, we realized this morning that when, when we woke up, we still had two legs to stand on and two feet to walk, a feet to walk with. We had two hands to reach out and touch. We had eyes to see this morning and ears to hear and a tongue to speak. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we found out this morning that yet we had raiment clothes to go on our back and food in our covers this morning that you provided for us. And God, we just come this morning to the house of worship to give you glory and to give you praise, to lift up your holy name because you are worthy of all of our praise. Oh, God, we thank you this morning. God, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. Oh, God, we ask that you move by your power and move by your spirit. Strengthen our hearts and strengthen our minds for the journey that is ahead of us, oh, God. Oh, Father, we pray this morning for your preached word that will come forth. Prepare our hearts this morning that we may be fed by your word that, this morning, that we may be encouraged for the journey that is ahead of us. And then, God, we pray for our worship leaders. We pray for the choir that will sing songs of Zion. And, God, we give you all praise. We give you all glory. We give you all the honor. For it's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Give God some praise. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. So can the redeemed of the Lord say so? Can the redeemed of the Lord say so? Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Can we just give God some praise in the house this morning? Can we just bless him because he's worthy of the praise? Can we give him the glory out of our life? In this very moment, we want to come into one accord with praise and worship because the Bible told us that we will continually have the blessing of the Lord on our mouth. So we should be ready to come in and praise God. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to put your hands together like this. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. 
and the Holy Spirit is having his way right now. Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. 
the uncle shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together.
one of the things I'd like to be is more <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> Jesus told us, the word of God tells us that one way to be more like him is to be obedient to his word. And in his word, he talked a lot about first fruit in the Old Testament and even in the New that we are to bring him the first. When you look at the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, it gives, a, gives us an example of a woman who was asked to bring the first. There was a man in this chapter and he was a preacher. There was a woman who was a widow. They both had a need, but their needs were somewhat different. They both needed physical food, but the woman needed spiritual food. God didn't just send Elijah to the woman to take care of him. But God sent Elijah to the woman to take care of her. The Bible said to tell Elijah, go down to Zarephath and a woman will sustain thee. Why would God send his preacher man to a widow woman who barely had anything? Doesn't God just have a way that he works things out? So he asked her for a little water. The woman was fine with that. And he said, by the way, make me a little cake of bread and bring that to me too. And she said, wait a minute now. I'm paraphrasing just a little bit. You come all the way here. Don't you know what season we're in right now? I only have enough for me and my son that we're going to eat it and die. But look at what he said. He said, Make me a cake first. Make me a cake first. That's how we are to treat God, to come to him first. And he went on to say, as the Lord has said, the cruise of all will not waste, nor shall the barrel of come meal on. be a waste. So, so God is doing something for the woman even though he sent the man to her. Oh, yeah. Ain't that something? So you know how long that barrel didn't waste and all the crews didn't, didn't run out? Three and a half years is how long the famine. Because what? She gave him first. God is saying, if you bring me first, all that you have that's left, I'm going to bless it in ways that you've never seen before. So even as we come now today, trust God with your first and watch him work with what's left. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
morning, home folks. Good morning. It's good to be back in Melbourne again. And I call this home because I have a special place in my heart for this place, for, for Macedonia Baptist Church and Pastor Harris and all of you. I didn't come up here to talk about myself. I came up here to talk about Jesus. Come on. He's good in Texas, and he's good here in Florida. Well, well, oh, yeah. So we need to bless his name. Re Rev I mean, I almost call him Reverend Lee. He did preach a sermon this morning, but, but he talked about coming to God, or giving God our first. I want to talk about going to God first. When we get in trouble, when things are going around, when, when, when things are just falling apart around us, we run to our friends rather than run to Jesus. Come on. We need to come to him first. There's a song that says, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. Well, What a well. privilege it, it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And I really like this when it says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning as we, as we pray together, as we go to God, as we praise him first of all and petition him for the things that we need because he is able. Father God, we come to you because first of all, we acknowledge you as God and God alone. You are the creator of this universe, Lord. You know every aspect of it, from the grains of sand to the giant planets, to the solar system and everything that's in it, Lord. So we know, Lord God, that you are in control of it all. We acknowledge you, Lord God, as our Holy Father, as one who loves us unconditionally, as one who created us in your image, Lord. So we bless you this morning, Lord, for giving us life and health and strength, for giving us food and clothing and shelter, the things we often take for granted, Lord. We want to come right now and say thank you, Lord. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but you made a way out of no way. When we couldn't see our way, Lord, you made a way for us. You are a way maker. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus, for being our Savior, the one who gave up his glory and came down here and showed us, gave us the perfect example of how we should live and conduct ourselves. And then you shed your precious blood for all of our sins. The blood that's able to cleanse even the darkest sins you shed for us. We thank you for being our Savior, for being our Lord, for being our propitiator, for being our potentate, for being all the things that we need, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us into all truth, who comfort us who tells us what to say and when we say, who tells us where to go and when we should do it. Bless you, Trinity, for all that you have done and all that you are doing and all that you will do, Lord God, because we come to you in faith this morning, Lord. You said without faith it is impossible to please you. And if we come to you, Lord God, we must first of all believe that you are and you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. So we seek you in all things, Lord. We come to you first this morning. We petition you on behalf of the things that are going on in our life. Thank you, first of all, Lord God, that you brought us through this pandemic, that you allowed us, Lord God, to see the other side of this pandemic. So we bless you, Lord, and allowed us to come together again and to congregate and to worship you in spirit and in truth today. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to be in every, every aspect of our service today. Guide our hearts that we may receive a word that when we walk out of here, we'll be better than we were when we came in. 
We pray for the preach word that's coming forth today, Lord God. And the messenger, Father, we ask you to anoint him. Anoint him, impregnate him with the word that he can deliver unto us, Lord. A rhema word fit for today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we pray for those who may be sick this morning, who may not be feeling well, those who may need a job, those who, who are just looking, for, looking to you for whatever kind of help that they need. We know, Lord, that you are a doctor. You've never lost a patient. We know, Lord God, that you see our legal aspects. We know, Lord God, that you see all the aspects of our homes, Lord God, and we pray for homes that they, that they we that they be homes of peace, Lord God, where you're always invited. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. We bless you this morning, Lord God, and we give you glory and honor. We pray, Lord God, that when we walk out of here, Lord God, the world will see a beacon of light through us and that Jesus Christ will be preached in our streets, Lord God, because he's still the way, the truth, and the light. So thank you, Lord God. In all things, Lord God, may you receive glory, honor, and praise. This is our prayer. We lift it up to you, Lord God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. As we prepare for the word of God, I want to ask that you lift up some words to the Lord. God, you are so amazing. God, you're so loyal. God, whatever we need, we know that we can come to you, oh God. This song says, whatever you need, it's in the room. Whether you need healing, whether you need breakthrough, whether you need deliverance, it's in the room today. Even there is a word from the Lord on today. Open your hearts to receive that word from the Lord. I can hear the Lord saying I'm away and I've heard your prayer no matter how you feel know that God is still the Lord say, I'm away, and I've heard your prayer, no matter how you feel, know that I am still in control. Say what? 
whatever I need. It's in the room. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. It's in the room. There is healing in here, and there's breakthrough in hell, and you can find your joy, you can find your joy, here in the room, whatever you need, whatever you need. you need it's in the room say it's in the room whatever you need whatever you need whatever you need it's in the room and no matter that God is still in control. Know that I am here and whatever Whatever you need, whatever you need, say it's in the room, it's in the room, whatever you need, whatever you need, say whatever you need, whatever you need, whatever. It's in the room. Speak to yourself and say, whatever I need. 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 It's in the room. Give God praise. Hallelujah. this morning is coming to us from Luke chapter 22 and verse 32. Luke chapter 22 and verse 32. You don't mind standing with us, do you? Yeah, yeah. So, so such a blessing to see each and every one of you here this morning. Amen. Luke 22 and verse 32. Let's read it together very loud and clear. Ready? Let's read. But Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Strength for the ages. Strength for the ages. 
Amen. If, if, if you are here or on the airways, Facebook, wherever, and you have not realized that death is in the midst of us, okay? You can't see that death is very, very close, all right? And you can't see that. Satan has you bound, all right? I say that with conviction. Satan has blinded you, all right? Satan is trying his very best to win all of the children of God to his situation. We know where Satan is going, all right? Satan is on his way to hell, and the Bible says all of his angels with him. Angels in this situation would be all of his help. He has all kind of help. And one of the things that's making us Christians who really believe God, one of the things that's preventing us from uh, getting the vaccine or being vaccinated, all right, is that we are allowing Satan in all of his efforts and desire to trick us. People are talking about, I don't want the vaccine because I hear that with the vaccine, you'll start eating up other people. All right? Oh, yeah, I, I heard that myself. All right? I've, I've heard you, you, what, I, what happened with me, and this is not a part, part of, it is a part of a message, but it ain't on my paper, okay? Uh, I, when, when we gave the vaccine here at Macedonia, say, I went out in the community passing out flyers. Oh my God. Satan is deceiving us so badly. All right? People are saying the vaccine is voodoo. The vaccine is the work of witchcraft. All other kinds of excuses for not giving God a chance to put life instead of death within us, all right? We then, the individuals may not desire to get the vaccine, but you, in the same vein, you can cause others to die. Look at our portion of scripture. <laughs> but I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. It takes the conversion of studying and allowing the word of God to prevent the evilness and the lies, and I say big lies, Big lies in high places. High places in the nation, y'all. Not in heaven, all right? Let me make that distinct. High places. President, well, past president. Telling the lies. Then turn around and get getting vaccine for him, his, ch his children, and his wife. All right? Yet still feeding the lies. Satan is attempting to stop Christians who are committed, who believe the word of God. I know in my heart that God gave us scientists, gave us doctors, and medicine. One thing we need to recognize, too, when you have a headache, what you going to do? You're going to take some medication or do something, all right? When, when, when you are sick and they say you can't get well, you have to go to a doctor, what are you going to do? You're going to go. You're going to go. We're in need of a doctor. And his name is Dr. Jesus. All right? 
We know, we, we know the person that created the heavens and the earth. We know the one that spoke and things came into existence. We know the word of God. And so I will challenge this morning, and it's been there for thousands of years, the word of God. When you are convinced, when you are satisfied that God is speaking, help your brother here. Help your brother. Don't allow negativism to stop you from trusting God and doing it God's way. Don't allow foolishness, all right, emptiness, stop you from knowing that there is a God. And he's doing the things that we need in our lives that we may overcome, that we will not give in to the work of the day. Strengthen your brother. There are many who are weak in our society today. But I got news for you. Look at this situation. I, I'll speak for me. You speak for yourself. I thought this pandemic, hey, I got my shot. All right? And I said, all right, things are well. Things are getting better. True enough, it started getting better. The bars of the graph, all right, started to come down. All right, first, it was about if you are old and if you are sickly, all right, then you need the virus. All right, that was working. All right, God was moving in the midst. And, and, and people stopped dying as fast as they were dying. People stopped going to hospitals as fast as they were going. Satan ain't through. He ain't through. All right? He is not through. What happened next? He moved to another situation. He said if the older people and the sickly people will get the, get the vaccine and they are not dying as fast, I got another way to work. I'll get the young adults, and I'll get the children, and I'll get the youth, all right? And what happened when, when the, those who didn't get the vaccine, when the young adults who are, who are talking, all, a lot of them talking that talk, all right, and our children, the virus has what? Gone back up. And the hospitals are filling up again. But look who they're filling up with. Look who they're filling up. They're filling up with young adults and children. The two who won't get vaccine or the, or the children who can't get it at this point. Don't let the devil deceive you. God is still working it out. God is in the room. He's in the room to help all of us. <laughs> And we are fighting against him. We are fighting. But we who are children of God got to help our brothers and children and sisters. Tell them don't be afraid to speak up because their lives are at stake. Those of us that have been vaccinated, all right, we're still wearing our masks, all right? We're still practicing safe distance. Why? Because those who are stiff necked will not take the vac vaccination, all right? And they will not believe that God is still working it out. So we have to wear the mask and practice safe distance in order to help the fools so that they won't kill all of us, all right? I know, I know it don't sound good to some of you, but it's the truth. We have to pray for those who will not do what God is calling us to do. You know why? Because some is sitting in the midst of us. All right? They are like... They, they are like wolves. Oh, y'all heard it too, huh? God speak. They are like wolves in sheep clothes. Some are sitting up in here, no doubt sitting in here right now, and you haven't had the virus, and yet you will place your children in danger, 
You will place your friends in danger. You will place your grandmama, your granddaddy, your auntie. You will place them in danger because you foolishly will not obey what God. And I know, somebody told me again uh, the situation where they asked for help, asked God to help. God sent the doctors. God sent the rescue in the boat, and the flood was coming. And the God neighbor, the man on top of his house, hollering, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. The boat come by. The man, they told him to jump in the boat. The man, man said, God's going to help me. Tell me that the man died, drowned. The man drowned because he would not receive the help. He got upset when he stood before the Lord. Lord, why you didn't help me? He said, I sent the man in the boat to help you. All right? I sent the, we doing the same thing. I sent the doctors to help you. I sent the medicine to use in order to help you. And you're too hard neck and stiff neck to do it. All right, let me get to my message. All right, strength for all the aged. God is still working on our behalf. All right, amen. We just have to recognize that God's strength is greater than all the powers in this world. And we have to trust God. For example, we recognize that God is our strength. God is our strength. In Psalms 46 and 1, we see the scripture saying to the psalmist, saying to us, God is our refuge and strength and very present help in time of trouble. I don't know about you, but this is a troubled time. And in everybody who don't believe we're in troubled time, you're walking in blindness. All right? But those of us that believe that God is our strength in time of weakness, when we're really feeling this pandemic upon us, when we're really ready to question what God is doing, when we say, I believe you, Lord, I believe you. And yet, we get a little intimidated when God gets to moving in, in, within us. We have to recognize like the psalmist recognized. Better yet, we need to be like Job. Job was a rich man, had plenty, had everything that he needed. And God, and from Scripture, God in heaven saw this character coming by, and it was Satan. And he asked Satan, Satan, where are you going? I'm going to and fro. You know what to and fro is, right? United States, Russia, India, you name it, because the pandemic is worldwide. Satan is saying, I'm going to and fro and seeing who I can devour. God, in, in, in his powerful way, all right, say, have you considered my servant Job? All right. Job was already declared a righteous man, seeking the Lord in all of his ways. And God asked that question of Satan. Satan's reply was, if you take that hedge of protection out from around you, I'll get Job. He's saying the same thing today. He ain't going nowhere. All right. If the Lord allows this pandemic, which is we, been, we know is of, of the devil, it ain't of God, all right? Just like we, we, we wonder about death. Why would death allow us to die? Because God, because of his love, because God gave mankind their power and authority to do what they wanted to do. God created them in perfection. Adam and Eve created them perfectly. They, all right? They were on their way to heaven without any problem. But man decided to eat the fruit of the tree which God told them not to eat. And because they did it, death came into the world. And out of God's love, God began to work his plan to help man to overcome death. All right? Death comes because of sin. 
not because of God not desiring for us, amen, to live forever in holiness, in righteousness. And so it was that God said, okay, well, you go ahead. I'm going to let you deal with Job, all right? But you can't touch his soul, all right? Yeah, because his soul belonged to me. Yeah, and he said, I'll make him curse you. So he began to destroy Job's valuables, kill his, children, kill his children, Satan caused them to die, kill all of Job's cattle, all right, everything of value that Job had, all right, kill the servants except for one. One came to Job and said, Job, everybody's dead. All of your property is gone. Sin, now keep in mind, sin is doing all of this. All right? And say, you, do, you, you just left. Job's friends came to him. All right? And looked at Job, and, and they couldn't say a word for about seven days. Just sit there with Job. Job's body was racked with pain. All right? Death seemed to be imminent among, on Job. Boils all over his body. All right. His friends sat there for, uh, for seven days and looked at him. And then they figured they had a prophetic word. They said, Joe, we, I'm paraphrasing, we, you in trouble. Body ragged with pain. You're sitting there. Boils all over your body. You done done something wrong. All right? You need to get right with God. All right? C trying to cause Job to turn away from his faith. All right? Friend, so-called friend. Not even that, but his wife. Say, Job, you ought to go ahead and curse God and die. All right? Job's reply, you sound as a foolish woman. This ain't no gender thing. This ain't no gender thing. Because if you're a man, you would do the same thing that woman did, all right? All of us inherited a sin, a, a, a spirit, if you would, of, of sin. We all have sin, sin and come short of the glory of God. You are guilty of violating the word of God. I am guilty of violating the word of God. And, and, and God wants, has a plan, and he wants all of us to receive eternal life. All right? He wants all of it. But we have to decide within ourselves. We decided we want to live like we want to do it. We want to do it our own way. We want to go where we want to go. We want to kill like we want to do. So God said, if you will turn to me, I will in no wise cast you out. All right? And so Job was faithful. All right? Are you willing to be faithful in the midst of a pandemic in all of the things that's happening? Some of us in here have lost family members because family members have said, I ain't getting no vaccine, and they ended up dying. It's out. Do y'all watch the news? Huh? The interviewing of people who have caught the virus and lived through it. What was their reply? I have yet to see one that said, honey, I had it, but I got over it. All right? Not a one. Every one of them that I've seen interviewed say, I wouldn't get the virus. I didn't believe in the virus. But they turned to the camera and said, get the shot. Get the shot. You don't want to go through this. What, what, what the alternative is? All right? They get the shot. I got it from my son. I got it from my, my, my family member. And it's just spreading like wildfire. Satan wants to trick us. Wants to cause us all the havoc that we will turn from God. We'll do like the, the, like the person told Job to do. Want to curse God. And where are you, God? When I was suffering. Where were you, God? When my job turned me out. Where were you, God? 
when everything around me, my mother died, my father died, children died. Where were you, God? God said, I was in the midst of you, but hoping that you will do it my way. But you've learned from foolishness and you're doing it your own way. Thank God for all of those who are doing it God's way. All right? Amen. So we believe that no matter what age you are, you need salvation. You need to trust in God. All right? And there is strength to help you. The first thing we do when we sin, talking about, I'm weak. I'm weak. God has strength for the weakest individual. That we recognize that all power in heaven and in earth is given unto us for our help and our strength. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord and he will direct your prayer. Trust in the Lord, I say, in the midst of weakness, he'll be that strength that you need. Trust in the Lord. <laughs> Believe in him. Not only is there strength in God, but the word tells us that, that there is strength in those of us that have accepted Christ as our Savior. The Bible says, greater is he than he that is in the world. Greater is he in you. Because Christ Jesus sent his spirit to dwell in us. And the Holy Spirit is living in us. The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us into all. It's God in us that helps us to overcome the ways of the world. It is God providing that strength that each and every one of us need. Then uh, there is strength in, uh, of beauty, all right, in heaven as well. Strength is the beauty of heaven. Just as it is that God's heaven, the place of dwelling, the place where some have described it as every day, shall be Sunday. Sweet Sabbath shall have no end. Every day shall have joy, unspeakable joy in heaven. Every day is a day of thanksgiving in heaven. Why? Because all good things come from above. For those of us that believe, all right, for the unbeliever, I'll see you before, I'll talk with you before I finish at the end of the message as well, but I'm talking to you now as well. We believe that heaven is a place of, of salvation, first of all. Heaven is a place where we shall escape from the damnation of hell and its fire and wickedness. There is fury in hell. There is, the Bible say, gashing of teeth in hell. But the big lie is that there ain't no hell. All right? You take that chance if you want to. But I tell you, there is a heaven and there is a hell. You make the choice. Just as it was in the very beginning. God, because we wanted to make our own decision, he allowed us to make our own choice. Choose you this day, Joshua told the Israelites whom you will serve. As for me and my, come on, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Somebody say, I'll serve the Lord. Somebody say, I'll serve the Lord. Somebody say, I'll serve the Lord. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Heaven is prepared for those who have called on the name of the Lord and allowed him to live in you. And within you there is power to overcome this world. There is strength in your time, my time of weakness. Trust in the God, Lord and lean not 
to your own understanding. There is strength in God. There is strength in the, the strength is in the beauty of heaven. Then God gives strength to the poor and to the needy. All right? Yeah. Isaiah says these words in, that, in, in verse 25, four, in, in chapter 25 and verse 4. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible one is at, as a storm against the wall. All right? That's what we are dealing with, and that's what God is trying to get us to understand. All right? That he not only helps the poor as he helped the widow woman. Unexpectedly, she had no understanding of what God was doing through the prophet. She thought her time and her child's time on earth was gone. All right? She said, we're going to eat this little bit we have, and we're going to go ahead and die. Yep. But God had a blessing in store for her. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's blessing was that I know you're poor. I know that's the last of your food, and there is a famine going on. He says, but put me first. We need to put God first, church. Continue to put him first if you are. If you're not, we want you to come and put him first within your life. And he, so he can help you. The needy he helped. I mean the poor he helped. But we know that there is, he say, it says he gives strength to the needy. All right? Every one of us in here is in need of God. I say in here, I'm talking about the world of God's blessing upon our lives. I know you're rich with money. All right? But you still need the Lord. I know you're rich in physical strength, but you still need the Lord. Some folk trust in houses and land. Some folks trust, all right, in, 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 in the chariot. That's a Cadillac for us today. All right? Carry Volkswagen, whatever, train, airplane. Lord knows we be trusting these air. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to go there. Uh, trust in the airplane. All right? Some folks do. But they that trust in the Lord, huh? He will provide whatever your need is. Whatever your genuine need is, what we have to do is call upon him, and he will answer. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own. God is providing for the poor, for the rich, for the sick, for the homeless. He provides for all that will trust him. Even in the midst of, uh, every time you turn around, the devil is throwing stuff up it. I'm, I was getting ready to say, even in the midst of this weather we're dealing with, all right, scientists, all right, uh, doctors and all, they say we are going through a climate change. Guess what the devil said? Ain't no such thing as the climate change. How in the world can anybody who got sense and can see even, no, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. I was finna say something. Even a blind man can see that. I ain't gonna mention that. All right, even a blind man can see the changes that is happening in this weather today. All right? Floods everywhere. Floods everywhere. All right, you'll be getting bashed. California, Oregon is burning up. Volcanoes are exploding. And we still sitting up looking, there ain't, ain't no climate change. Like you some kind of scientist of authority. You may have been, may have been president, but you still ain't no scientist. You may have been president, but you don't have no authority. 
like God's authority. God created the heavens and the earth. God made of the land. He made the sea. All right? Even the sea and the wind and the waves obey his will. Because he's the authority. We don't have the authority. We build climbing walls. We build everything. And all it takes is one hurricane. All it takes is a tornado. God working, trying to get our attention to recognize that he is the I am God. He is the one that can speak to the waves and the will and say, peace, be still. He did it in the Bible day, and he can do it for us today. He took care of the Bible people, and he's taking care of us now. If we would just trust in him and lean not to our own understanding. He will help you. If you are willing to just throw up your hands and say, Lord, I need you. When I go to bed at night, Lord, and don't even know that I'm what's going on around me when I'm slumbering and sleeping, Lord, I need you. When I travel on these dangerous highways and byways, all right, not knowing what's going to happen, leave home saying, I'll see you later, honey, and never return. All right? God, what did that song say, Philip? Is still in control. He can help you no matter what your situation is. In school, on your job, wherever you are, trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding, but trust in him. He will strengthen you. Then there is the way of the Lord, his strength. The way of the Lord, his strength. Proverbs 10, 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. All right? Those who trust in the Lord realize that the Bible says, Jesus said in the Bible, all right, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Have you made that willingness? Have you re responded to God's call upon your life? Know that just as God protected the Israelites, those who depended on him, he's protecting us today. We just need to call on him and he will answer our prayers. Recognize him as being the only way to salvation. The only way to eternal life is through Christ Jesus. It is his strength same strength that allowed Jesus to go back into heaven was the strength that he needed when he took on the form of man and came to the earth. He became a pauper. He became as we were in order that he can set up the example for us to follow, that we would follow after him. And as the role model, he suffered. We got to suffer down here. And yet, he continued to trust God. We are the upright now he's talking about. Those who receive. He not only suffered the gospel and the agony of world, the world and man, but he died on that cross of Calvary. Not for his own sake, but that we could have life and have it more abundantly. In his death, he, after death, he was resurrected from the grave. All right? He ascended back into heaven. And in heaven then, he didn't stop there, but he's sitting in heaven speaking on our behalf. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All right, Father, help them. All right, because if they are willing to be upright, then they'll realize the power and authority that I have given unto them. I have helped them. They cannot deceive me. All right, because I'm all power. 
And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, speaking out in your behalf and mine. All right? He said, the unrighteous is operating as foolish people. Yeah, foolish people. They're living under their same authority. They're living under their own whims and where. Here today, gone today. All right? Saying and doing everything. But he says, the righteous will be strengthened through this. And then God increases. After all that have been said, all right, all that has been said, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. We all are in need of the power and strength of God. Where are you this morning? Have you given yourself to Christ? Have you believed that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? All right? Are you weak in your way as I am and as you are? We're weak along the way. But there's strength for our weaknesses. There is power for our lives. There is help with our trouble. Do you know Christ? If you don't know Christ, this is that opportunity right now for you to receive him. He says unto him, as a part of his plan continuing for our lives, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Even those who won't get the vaccine is halfway scared because they know that they, what they got ain't, ain't enough to bring life to them. When you look at that situation, uh, you know your life ain't in your hands. And we all would have probably been dead. We would have been dead by now. But he said, if you come unto me with your labor, the things that are causing you the difficulty, he says, I will in no wise cast you out. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn about the Lord. Don't allow the devil to fool you. Don't allow Satan and all of his angels. Yes, Satan has angels deceive you and think that you can live by your own power and strength? You are my strength Strength like no other Is he your strength today? Strength like no other Have you invited him into your whole life? He reaches to me God is willing I may not know. My hope. Others may not know, but you know, and God knows your position. Won't you get right with God? Won't you accept Christ as your personal Savior? Won't you invite Him into your heart? He loves you, He cares for you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I'll come in and come with him and he with me. Let him into your heart today. Let him be the power and strength that you need today. Come. today. You're going to leave out of here, all right? But don't harden your heart. Don't allow Satan to tell you, hold on, hold on, pay that no attention. All right? That's the lie. That's the lie of the world. The lie of the Allow God to lead and guide you as well.
Let us remain standing for him. We thank God for each of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for allowing God an opportunity to breathe into you the power, the breath of life, the anointing that is able to break down your, your finder, your discourage us. All right? But thank God that you learned the way of your leading today. May he keep you is our prayer. Share Jesus with someone if you are saved. If you're not saved, don't allow the spirit to pass away from you. Don't grieve the spirit, but listen to the spirit. Study the word of God. Let him speak to you. All right? May we receive a cold and genevieve. Please, for those who remember that the Women's Day is coming up, we're looking forward to it, all right? Amen. 23rd, 24th, and 25th this month, please join with us this year. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Now and forever. Let everyone say amen. Amen.